I'd like to begin my lesson today by sharing with you these words <clears throat> by uh, futurist Barbara Marks Hubbard. It's from her book, The Evolutionary Journey. And I'd like you to consider these thoughts in terms of your evolutionary journey this year in 2021, that of healing yourself and healing the world. She says, we live at the most marvelous moment in human history. Everyone now alive is involved in the greatest spiritual upheaval since humanity emerged out of the animal world. We are at the dawn of a conscious revolution when humans are first becoming aware of the processes of creation and beginning to participate willingly and deliberately in the design of our world. We are the first generation to awaken to the awesome fact that we are affecting the future by our every act, from the number of children we have and the kind of food we eat, to the creation of new life forms and finding new worlds in outer space. We are moving more consciously toward a new world order of great evolutionary tasks, the restoration of our earth, the freeing of people from want, the development of the vast untapped potential of our body minds, and the exploration of the unlimited frontiers of outer space. Now, Barbara Marks Hubbard started writing about her ideas some 35 years ago. In fact, she presented some of her workshops here in New Orleans. Perhaps some of you were there with me. Since then, the world has truly changed in so very many ways. And the things she talked about are happening everywhere. The idea of our conscious controlling of our destiny, for example, is a long way from talking about the fact that what's happening out there determines our destiny. And this idea is now very widely uh, accepted by scientists everywhere and thinking people. It certainly is accepted by Unity students. We always say our thinking creates our world. It's not new to us, but it is a quantum leap from just knowing this truth and to really applying it to our daily lives. And that's what I'd like for us to talk about today, is really applying these ideas to our everyday life, 24-7. The fascinating thing to me is that quantum physics has proven this idea of how our consciousness can change the world. This has been a physics theory for almost 100 years, that all life is connected, and that our consciousness, not external things or events, is the most important factor in terms of creating our world. But in the past 20 years or so, scientists have built equipment that has actually proven these theories. Whether you call the connecting glue of this oneness of all life, or God, or spirit, Brahman, Yahweh, or the force, is irrelevant. We know now that the universe and we who are in it are all one big pulsating thing. The very cells of our bodies, when you think about it, are constantly being sloughed off into the universe, which becomes then, that energy becomes something else. While we absorb new energy into our bodies and they replace those cells. Every seven years, all the cells in your body have been replaced. Have you ever wondered where your liver or hair or left arm of seven years ago are now? I've thought about that before, maybe in your neighbor's new baby, or in the petunias in City Park, or maybe in that person whom you hate at work. And due to our oneness with life, we are wired to this omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence, as we call God at unity. 
Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore named these vast, untapped powers of the universe the 12 powers that we've been talking about. He said 100 years ago that these powers are within each person, within us, and ready to develop and tap into. Such things as love and wisdom, understanding, order, judgment, will, and strength. We just need to remember this truth and stay alert, especially in times when those old limiting thoughts creep in from time to time, which they do for all of us, mostly from the influence of people who are still stuck back in the 15th century way of viewing our world. These old, more Newtonian ideas said that the world was comprised of myriad separate objects and people. Everything was separate and they stood back and would study all those separate objects. Quantum physics tells us that the world is all one big mass of energy, interacting constantly. The energy is just bouncing all over the place. It's in you one second and somebody else another second. Quantum physicist Fritz Capra told us in his book, The Tao of Physics, that we are just now catching up with what the Hindus taught some 6,000 years ago. For example, in the Bhagavad Gita, the character Krishna, which means Christ, like Christ consciousness, says, those who see me in everything and everything in me know the staggering truth that the self in the individual is the self in all. 4,000 years later, Jesus the Christ said, my father and I are one, meaning that Jesus and God were one and the same thing. He also said, these things that I do, ye shall do also and greater, thus assuring us that we too are one with spirit or God, and that we can and should live as Jesus the Christ did live and move and have our being in God. The renowned physician and geneticist Robert Lanza and famous quantum physicist Matej Pavzik said in their new book, The Grand Biocentric Design, consciousness changes reality. Objective reality as we know it does not exist. The Nobel Prize winning Hungarian-American physicist Eugene Wigner explained, until not many years ago, the existence of a soul would have been passionately designed by most physical scientists. But the very study of the external world has now led us to the conclusion that the content of consciousness is an ultimate reality. He goes on to say, as did the Galileo of our time, Heisenberg, that our consciousness actually changes physical reality. In other words, the mind and our consciousness has a central place in the ultimate nature of reality. For example, dozens of recent medical studies have verified the power of prayer. There is nothing new to us at Unity we, of course, have known that for ages, that we can heal ourselves and others through prayer. But the fact that science is now actually proving what we've always known is huge. Many physicists, including Stephen Hawking, have taken things even further and said, with concepts like the participatory universe, we don't merely create the present, but the past as well, which incidentally, the Course of Miracles says all the way through, loud and clear. I hope that this shift from theory to scientific discovery punctuates in your mind your ability to change your world and to change yourself with your consciousness. When we change our thinking, we jump paradigms and our whole world changes. 
As a result, maybe we are Democrats and we start dialoguing with the Republicans or vice versa instead of just rejecting them. Maybe we quit hating certain people, former friends, family, spouses, or politicians, and start understanding why they are the way they are and how our internal triggers, our internal triggers and conditioning contribute to what we think they are. This change in consciousness can free us from health debilitating negativity. But that's just lanyard compared to the peace, joy, and healing that we can create in our world, certainly in our personal worlds to start with. This is the meaning of thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You might say to yourself, well, that's all fine and good, but what about all those crises we're dealing with? The COVID pandemic, the declining economy, and job losses, or the recent events in Washington, D.C. Spiritual sages would answer, all crises yield opportunities. Opportunities that we might not have seen before. I call to your attention the Chinese character for crisis, which also means opportunity. For example, maybe we could start remembering that what's behind all this political strife is the idea of the United States, not a disunited 350 million people. This country was founded on the idea of in God we trust, we need to start trusting God within, within us, within our friends, and within our foes, remembering that we're all on the same side. We're Americans. We do well to remember also that united we stand, divided we fall. Let's don't take democracy for granted. It's time to heal and to dialogue because we're all one entity. When we don't cooperate, it's like the red corpuscle saying to the white corpuscle, I reject you and I refuse to work with you, and then the person dies. In reality, it's actually a great time to be alive because of this idea of the oneness of all life and the interconnectedness of all people and all things. We just need to start applying that to our lives so that we will live happier. Open-mindedness, compassion, and a willingness to sacrifice our individual ego for the collective ego, if you will, and inner divinity is fast becoming a reality for a critical mass of people out there. Will we allow ourselves to change with them and move ahead. We have the power to create our destiny in ways that used to seem like science fiction. Modern scientists are telling us that the same thing that spiritual masters have been saying for thousands of years, 6,000 years or more, that our consciousness creates not only our reality, but reality itself. Often what we think is reality due to our programming is just pure maya or illusion. It's often been said that quantum physics and Eastern spirituality have merged. They've been saying that for quite a while. Well, the part of Eastern spirituality that they're talking about is the same truth that Unity co-founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore based their teachings on that we have the ability to transform ourselves and the world and that all things are one. And this one is spirit or God or Brahman. It is particularly critical that we transform now because humankind is facing a serious crisis, the crisis of our very survival. We are rightfully worried 
about an international pandemic, global warming, political upheavals, and nuclear annihilation. But these crises can force us to seize the opportunity to let our petty differences go and start working together as one, the one that we are, even in a physical sense. For example, look at the COVID-19 crisis. Virtual classes, virtual meetings, virtual jobs, church services, and other gatherings have sprung up all over the place. Everyone is Zooming, right? People have been able to participate in things they never could have before. For example, over the Christmas holidays, I was able to virtually go to Unity Village and participate in a 10 hour a day Buddhist retreat that changed my life. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even have been able to get to Unity Village in December due to the snow and ice, which was the case this year. But because of the COVID crisis and the retreats being virtual, there I was at Unity Village's Buddhist temple with three of the most impressive Unity Buddhist teachers I have ever had the privilege of working with. I never could have done that if COVID hadn't happened. Many businesses have learned that their workers don't have to waste two or three hours a day commuting to their jobs. They work virtually from home. This has given families more time to be together and people have more time to sleep and relax. Not only do crises present the opportunity for transformation, but crisis is, is an inherent part of the transformational process. Turning again to Barbara Marks Hubbard's book, The Evolutionary Journey, she says, looking back on the 15 billion years of evolution, certain lessons can be learned. One lesson is this, crisis precedes transformation. Before every quantum change, problems emerged. The crises looked like mistakes, deadly errors in the system. But after the quantum transformation, these problems were seen to have been evolutionary drivers, vital stimulants which triggered astounding innovations. And so it is with our individual lives. Think how many seeming catastrophes have catapulted us on to new beginnings, maybe losing a job just to find a better one, maybe the breakup of a relationship which pushed us on to more supportive people, maybe the loss of health or finances or loved ones, which pushed us into a more enduring kind of security. Every crisis is a transformation attempting to occur. And let's remember that transformation is more than a modification or reform of the old system or our old self. Transformation is the birthing of something totally new and different. I'll share this with you again. <laughs> a butterfly is not a modification of a caterpillar. A butterfly is a totally new being. That's what we're aiming for. It's like we are travelers. We've been going along and we've reached a fork in the road. We don't have the choice of going in the same direction. The former road has stopped. We only have the fork in the road, which new direction will we go in? For example, parents have the choice of how they'll respond to their children growing up. They don't have the choice to not let them grow up. They're going to grow up. That's a given. It's like we as a species and as individuals don't have the choice to grow up or not. We will, but we do have the choice to decide how we will respond to our new maturity. Just as some adults really never do grow up, but they just kind of continue to carry on with their childish mentality into adult years, we too have the same option, but one choice is full of an 
inevitable suffering and possible self-destruction. That is the road of competition, ego, judgment, non-forgiveness. The other road allows us to fly away as a butterfly, free from many of our former, former earthly problems. That's the road of love, compassion, forgiveness, a feeling of oneness with everyone, not just those who we've been programmed to like. An important facet of growing up is becoming responsible for our own life. We can't blame it on what's going on out there anymore. An important part of our collective maturity lies in recognizing that we are co-creators of our life on this planet. Our transformation is not something forced upon us by a power outside us. Rather, it's the result of the ripening of a potential that is latent right in us, our divine potential that we all have. David Spangler, author of Towards a Planetary Vision, wrote, in the Old Testament, God often speaks to his prophets and says, gird up thy loins and go forth to carry out my will. Each of us is a modern prophet being asked to do just exactly that, to go forth into the world and to become architects of who we are in these new times of possibility. The old ways of doing things just won't work anymore. I call these old ways Newtonian thinking. But I invite you to make a quantum leap in what we now know is a quantum universe of possibilities and interconnectedness of all people and things. We have the chance to transform from our secure but limited chrysalis state into a magnificent butterfly state and soar above some of these old paradigms that used to get us down. And when enough people choose to be open-minded and compassionate and loving, we will then reach a critical mass of evolved people and then a tipping point will happen and the whole world will change. We will no longer think the earth is flat or that the sun revolves around the earth or that we are separate beings out there fighting to be the fittest in the survival game of the unevolved. In the meantime, waiting for the masses to catch up, you can certainly change your life and your world for the better by changing your individual consciousness to a state of cooperation, love, and compassion. Psychologists tell us we'd rather be secure and miserable in our old thinking and lives because we know how to operate in that system. I think they call this cognitive dissonance. But we can choose more fulfilling lives than that, even if it's new to us and takes a little adjusting to. As Charles Fillmore and so many others have pointed out, we begin doing our work of bringing about change in us and in the world when we recognize that within us lies all of the creativity, love, power, wisdom, and other powers that we need to completely transform and heal our lives and heal the world. You have a vital part to play in the transformation of this planet. You have a vital part to play in the next step in the evolution of mankind. How do you know? Because if you are alive and breathing right now, then you are a part of the plan. And the very fact that you've chosen to hear these words and be here today means that you are ready to consciously participate in the healing and transformation of yourself and your planet. What can you do as an individual to participate in the great healing plan? First, you participate when you work 
to bring love and harmony into your own life by forgiving yourself and forgiving others of all judgments and condemnation by letting go of the past and living fully in the magic of the present moment right now by trusting in spirit your div inner divinity the universal omniscience omnipotence and omnipresence you will then contribute immensely to the welfare of the planet not to mention the great healing that you will personally derive you participate in the great healing plan when you pray for world peace for all world leaders to see truth you participate in the great healing plan when you turn to your higher self within to seek guidance and direction in your life as you ask and are open to hearing you will receive your answer ask and ye shall receive I'd like to conclude with these words by Robert Mueller, world peace visionary and former Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations. For the first time in evolution, the human species has assumed a collective responsibility for the success of planet Earth in the universe. Interdependence, globality, and a total view of our planet and the environment are now facts of life. Not much more is needed. We humans are also entrenched in a universal environment, the cosmos, the total creation and flow of time. We must feel part of all space and time, of the greatness and wonders of the universe. You know and love your home, don't you? Well, you must also know and love your planetary home as well as your universal home. From the infinitely large to the infinitely small, we must stand in awe before the beauty and miracle of creation. Perhaps this will be the new spiritual ideology which will bind the human race. We must lift again our spirits and hearts into the infinite bliss and mystery of the universe and eternity. We must reestablish the unity of our planet and of our being with the universe and with divinity. We must have our roots in the earth and our hearts in heaven. We must see our planet and ourselves as cells of a universe, which is becoming increasingly conscious of itself in us. This is our real road out of the present bewilderment. And I would say that this is what will heal our world in 2021. And you can start this process right now here in your heart and in your daily life.